Uh, Reimagine Round Lake Beach is a uh, Facebook group. They're a Round Lake Beach group. I think I'm on. Let's see what it says here. Facebook Live. Here we go. Yeah, I think we're live. <laughs> Happy Halloween, man. How are you? Good. How are you doing, man? Pretty good. Hey, you everybody. Sound? I'm Michael Myers. No, I am. The real Michael Myers is here, too. <laughs> yeah, it's a little muffled under there. A little bit hot inside of that thing, man. I don't know how the kid does it. It's because hey. my face is so small. <laughs> it's practically like ventilated. This is uh, the little Michael Myers that roams the neighborhood of Grays Lake here. <laughs> Terrorizing up? Grays Lake moms. You get all your candy today? Mm -hmm. All right, cool. My car bag is just full. Well, that's so how's everybody doing out there in Facebook land? I'm uh, I'm Josh Grubbs, owner and uh, operator brewer for Black Lung Brewing Company. <clears throat> Currently based out of uh, Waukegan and looking soon to open up a uh, brewery and tap room over in Round Lake Beach, Illinois. I'm here with my buddy, Ryan Walker. Ryan is a manager over at Perfect Brewing Supply in Libertyville, Illinois on Route 176, and also a brewer at uh, Roaring Table in Lake Zurich. How you doing today, buddy? Doing great. What's new with you? Not much, just working. The shop's been busy. Heck yeah, man. I'm just trying to dig in on my black uh, on my little phone here to see if I can find the live so I can see the stream. There we go. I can find it. I got it. Cool. Now I can see if people actually like chime in and what they're saying. I was on Facebook. Yeah. So we're uh, just kind of coming together. We're gonna we're gonna drink a couple of beers today and talk about them, and uh, maybe chat a little bit about what's going on in the world of beer and I guess the world of COVID this this week. That's my lactate. Oh, I thought it was a Tums. But yeah, you're you're <laughs> gonna need that with the Roaring Table beers. For the most yeah. part. Yeah, well, I'm going to need it today with the Black Lung beer, too, because it's the only Black Lung beer that has uh, has any lactose or milk sugar in it. This one? Candy Factory, the Peach Lassie. This is a series we're doing, um, kind of inspired by Peach Lassie, or Lassies, I should say, which is an Indian, like, milk-based drink, so it's natural that it would have milk sugar. Um, we like this a lot. This is our kettle sour recipe. And we do it with um, uh, mostly an IPA grain base and uh, really IPA level hops too. But then I add some spices, vanilla and milk sugar to it to, uh, to give it some of that, that candy shop, candy factory um, uh, flavor. So it's tart, it's kettle sour, it's tart. And, uh, but it's got some other fun stuff going on. Have you ever tried this one before, dude? I think you brought it into the shop like a week or two after you canned it. And yeah. we all liked it. Yeah, it's certainly I'm tart. I'm gonna I'm gonna break into it. So first off though, before I jump too far, I do want to show off Matt Mays' artwork a little bit. I pitched this idea to Matt of like a factory, candy factory, and it's the name comes from uh, uh, my grandma she used to take us to the candy factory in Zion when we were kids. And I'd always grab for the sour candies and sour babies and stuff. So that's where the whole idea came from. So there's the poor. Nice carbonation. I'm guessing it's yeah, sweet. Yeah, it, it did come out pretty good. Yeah, it's sweet because it has lactose in it. And uh, it's mashed a little higher. But it's also got some other stuff in it. So I also, and I put it right on here too. It's got honey, vanilla, spite other spices like cardamom which people are afraid of cardamom so i didn't want to put it on there but so i just said spices that's a that's a smart move i think people see spice that they don't recognize that kind of scares them away sometimes or just makes them hesitate on buying a four pack or exactly yeah we don't want of it so, so that's probably a good move 
first impression, I get a little, I get definitely get some hops, some citra. It's still coming through. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And the got some like vanilla. vanilla. I think I get the, like the creamy lactose yep. smell somehow that lactose actually has a smell. Yep, for sure. It's a sweet smell. Good carbonation. Slightly round, but definitely not um, overly thick. It's got nice um, <clears throat> drinkability too. The tartness is like nicely balanced with the lactose, milk, sugar, whatever you want to call it. It's all the same thing. Yeah. The, the vanilla too is definitely present. Came up honey before. stuff to pull off to make it pop honey, but I think it had something, maybe a drying factor or something to this. Yeah, I'm thinking the honey, did, all it really did was help it dry out some more, which is because I don't really get a lot of honey when I drink it. Honey's in lassies usually? Yeah, it is. And we put, I think I put, uh, she was, how much did I put? It had to be 20 pounds of honey. Honey's uh, not cheap. Yeah, it's not cheap and it, it uh, dries your beer right out. Which is the opposite of what a lot of people usually think. They think it's going to make it sweet and taste like honey, but it's just sugar that just turns into alcohol, basically. And it's gone pretty much in the flavor. I'm going to go gallery is, view. So that, uh, there we go. This is definitely very drinkable. Cool, man. Thanks. I've, I've, been, I've been enjoying them. Um, I don't have too many of them because of the lactose, but I, I get one once in a while and I always take my little lactate pill, then I'm good to go usually. Um, it's uh, it, It's been fun doing some sours. I know you guys have really been crushing some sours out at uh, the roaring table too. Yeah, that's kind of been something that people have sort of decided for us that that's like our style, our specialty kind of thing, our sour, the sour IPA going for that Hudson Valley kind of thing, that desserty, sweet tart balance thing with a, a good beer with using lactose and souring bacteria and stuff like that. So it's, it's almost like a culinary thing, trying to come up with the flavors to put into those where it's like usually a good amount of fruit and then some sort of balancing botanical or something like that. Yeah, we didn't really even talk about the peach. I think the, the peach in this one adds like a, like almost a little more bitterness or something. The peach is there. Do you use like a puree? Yeah, it was a puree uh, towards the end of fermentation. So we still got full fermentation of it, but uh, it did uh, definitely left behind some flavor. And then the hops kind of put some peachiness in there too, some stone fruit. Yeah. Yeah, we did, uh, I did Citra, Summit, and Azaka in this one. And it was for that reason, just because they they all kind of lean to that citrus and peach flavor. Yeah, it worked in this. Tasty. So our new 14 ounce glasses. We're gonna call this a full pour at Black Lung Brewery. That looks cool. That's going to be like your house glass. My house glass. Those are cool. They're just straight up. Yeah, pretty straight up. That's why I, think. I don't think I've ever seen that before. Those are sick. Pretty sick, ain't it? It yeah, does like give that. you some aromatic still. Good solid aromatic. It's like a shoot, man. It just kind of fires the, the nose at you. I like those. Did you order all your glass for it yet? Or that's. No, I, I just settled on it finally. So. Um, I did meet with a representative from uh, this company. Um, excuse me. Uh, name's escaping me again, but they uh, they came out and he, he brought some for me to check out and very cool. Yeah. I got a Pilsner glass too. One of the nice tall ones, like what we had when we went out to uh, uh, Beerstadt. Yeah, the stemmed ones. Yeah, the stem. I, oh no, this isn't stemmed. It's uh, it's the straight tall Pilsner glass. I don't have them down here. Like this guy? That one. Yeah, that's awesome. 
I love these things. This is Goldfinger. Goldfinger. Yep. Yeah, just like Goldfingers. Oh yeah, I remember that soon nothing down here. Those are my my favorites. Those them. are my favorites too. See, man, that's why we click, bro. <laughs> <laughs> we're like uh I think we're 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 kind of in the same boat in that we we do dig all like the hype beers and like we have fun making them and stuff. But at the end of the day, we just really like to crush some pilsners. So I got home and poured some pit burgers. Four and a half, four point nine percent or something like that. You just put full yep. flavor, well Woodman's, man. You can get like fairly, fairly fresh bit burger at Woodman's, which is just the best. I love Woodman's. Yeah. The secret's out. I know Dan Burgers, my other uh, bit burger freak. Oh yeah, can't go wrong. People are finding out. Sometimes you go there and it's just gone. Everybody's just wiped them clear of Bit Burger. But Bummer. I got lucky and found some four packs, I guess. I drive by Woodman's twice a day up in Wisconsin. So stop in whenever I need some. Shout out to Woodman's. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> that be big, big box store trying to put down a little guy. Yeah, we <laughs> should be. Shouting out like Oak Trail Spirits and Beer Bazaar, Gold Eagle and Beer Bazaar, Bazaar, sure. Gold Eagle, Antioch Fine Wine, they they carry all that stuff there too. And you can get some fine local pilsner at Beer Bazaar, including the one that we're going to try in a few minutes. Yeah, I don't know if they have it in stock right now, but that is a Roaring Table pilsner. I can tell you, I'm not going to lie, I've drank quite a few of these already. Not today, but I have had them. It's a, yeah, it's a second batch of it. Mine looks, mine's an unlabeled, undated nice. can. But we think it came out just as good as the first batch. I think the first batch was our fastest moving 10 barrels of beer we've ever moved through. Nice. So we did a double batch. So there's a lot of that at the tap room if anybody wants to come buy a four pack or two or a case. Yeah. I, uh, I was reading on Facebook uh, for you guys that you're you're going back to uh, tap room to go sales with the new shutdown criteria. Yeah, they're yeah they're shutting down inside. We have the patio that's open. Um, sounds like it was a little slow tonight, but we're hoping for a little bit more with it being sort of nice. But it's Halloween too, so I think a lot it's of Halloween. Hanging out yeah, so definitely go support Roaring Table and all of our local breweries in, in the area. Uh, they're all a lot of them are doing to go sales. Just watch your websites, Instagrams, and Facebook for what's going on and the protocols for for getting beer. And my beer you can grab at any of the local uh, uh, places uh, shown on uh, on our website. I'm uh, having to regulate the ten year old over here who's digging around in a bag of skittles and screwing up our audio <laughs> i was doing laundry so i closed my line that was making some noise but that should be nice. done for now so what else is going on at the build out up in round lake beach yeah funny you should ask i was gonna pop up the screen and uh show everybody we, we uh started digging in drains this week let's see if i can share my screen here without uh Let's see where, how do I do that? We'll just go desktop. Don't show us too much now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I don't want to show any bad stuff. Personal emails. <laughs> yeah, that's mostly just junk mail. We like tore out the floor completely, pretty much, or enough to of, epoxy it and put in floor drains. Yeah, we're just uh, we're cutting away uh, trenches. Here we go. Nice. So we got these trenches dug out, and we're putting in uh, the PVC SDR, whatever schedule four, schedule forty, I believe, or schedule eighty. And that'll carry, so this is going to be where the bar's at, where my cursor's hitting up at the top of the screen there, middle of the screen. And then 
that'll be our water and stuff in there. And then on the bottom here, you're seeing like where there's some floor drains by the back back area workspace. Yeah, so we're, we're plugging away. This is all going in this week and next week, and then we'll start building walls and hopefully putting the uh, putting the walk-in in. That's going to be like behind where that picture is taken? The walk-in will be to the left over here. Okay. And like there's a drain in the walk-in. And then uh, the bar is in front of it, like to the middle okay. of the screen. I see. And that bar area you see over there is like going to be the seating area. So we still have a lot of work to do, but uh, it has begun. That looks good. It's nice, clean, clean cut concrete, looks like. Yeah, we're uh, going for a pretty, pretty chill. Uh, not not too crazy tap room. Just be uh, somewhere you can come locally and get some local craft beer <clears throat> made in house and uh, hang out and chat with me or whoever I got behind the bar. Uh, most likely will be someone I know that uh, is also very cool. <laughs> Are you going to be blasting metal music the whole time? Is that like going to be or what kind of music? Uh, I'm not going to do that. I mean, it'll be pretty chill. Yeah, we're not. I love metal music, but I don't expect that everybody does. Yeah. If I have to work behind the bar, I probably will have something on. Actually, I've been more digging like 90s and early 2000s grunge lately than anything. Yeah, so it's like whatever the, whatever you feel like listening to. It's not just like, it's like a theme bar. Brewery. Yeah. yeah, we're, I'm a, I mean, I'm a musician. I don't just play metal. It's just, uh, yeah, one of my, one of my loves, but play a little bit of everything yeah i'm just saying there's like some breweries that like true in denver we went there they were metal yeah they were metal. Well, even like uh three, three floyds, floyds. With, uh, with their punk man i mean they, that place is just punk crazy yeah i would say like honestly man i'm i'm probably more of a ozzy ozzy or ozzy osborne rocker than anything and then um definitely a big fan of 90s grunge and uh pantera metallica stuff mm -hmm. like that from back in the day not not so much the newer stuff yeah you catch me listening to some uh mastodon once in a while that's that's metal that's metal but we'll uh we'll probably play a lot of grunge and kind of set the mood make sure you can enjoy your brew more than uh, enjoy my music that I like to listen to. <laughs> yeah, cool, man. So let's dig into this other beer we got here. So, um, you know, I, I had a note on here. I wanted to show you guys uh, for the tap room when we do the bar. And I think in the future, I'll bring, I'll bring these things out and show them to you. But I got these like metal dividers. They're like little clamps that uh, clamp down to plexiglass that we're going to do at the bar. Just so people, when we do get to the point where we can have seating, seating again, uh, you can have dividers between you and the group next to you if you're sitting at the bar. I think it's fairly innovative. Um, I got the idea from uh, another restaurant, uh, the Shanty in Wadsworth. They've got the same thing set up. Theirs are a lot fancier than mine will be, but definitely will be a cool option. And then uh, next up, uh, Ryan. Ryan's uh, going to talk for a second here. Ryan, tell us about uh, Pilsner. And Roaring Table Pilsner. So this is Lane's Lane's recipe. It's, I mean, for a Pilsner as it should be, it's just super simple. I think the thing that's different about this one is that it's got a big, heavy whirlpool of uh, sapphire hops, which is a newer German variety that's a little bit more fruity than the old school German varieties. Yep. It's crystal clear and right. looks like a Pilsner, which is great. Well, that's a perfect Pilsner there. That's yeah, and it's just clear. a little extra carbonation on it for a little palate cleansing, I guess, is what you get from that extra carbonation. It's yeah. a little 
lower on bitterness. I think for some Pilsners are like up in 40s for IBUs. This one's probably 30, 35, which is a little more gentle, a little more drinkable. But um, it's got that uh, great Pilsner like uh, spicy note to it. Yeah, it's just fermented a little extra cold, like below 50, I think, 49 or 48. Oh, wow. For the cleanest flavor you can get out of yeast. And then it's just <clears throat> aged a little bit of extra time in the bright tank before we package it to let it just chill like a true German lager should. And then we use like um, German Weirmann malt which is, I don't think there's a workaround for that. That's, you have to use that pretty much for a good German malty flavor. Why not when it's so accessible? Yeah, we can get it pretty easily. We use um, a Weirmann too, it's just a great malt. They're the, they're the best, I think, for lagers or other stuff too. But, um. <clears throat> This one's got, yeah, the big thing about this, I think that makes it smell different than others is the big whirlpool addition of the sapphire hops, which is way more than a German brewery would probably put in the boil, but lower the heat a little bit and then throw a bunch of those sapphire hops in and let them sit for a bit before we put it into the fermenter. There you go. A little it's, extra. it's not dry hopped or anything like that. It's just a big, pretty heavy, Whirlpool. It's an easy drinker. I mean, I've kind of found in the first few sips there. Yeah, I would say as far as uh, uh, bitterness, it might be a little bit on the, the bitter side of what you might be used to for the style, but it works. It's fantastic. It's got a great aroma and it's uh, extremely approachable. And when I say that, like that, that means like I could just drink a ton of them. Uh, it's like a drinking beer that you could sit around a fire, have a bunch of beers, and and just keep coming back to it. That's yeah, a good. It, it does really well in the summer. I think we put the first batch out at like the end of summer, the last hurrah of summer that weekend, mm -hmm. and I think that's why it just was gone that's so awesome. fast. The cans and the draft were just gone. It uh, it makes me feel good because we just did the. Uh, beer with the Lutra yeast and it's a it's a blonde ale but it's really my Pilsner recipe and uh, I'm excited for it so uh, it's good to see that people are drinking uh, smaller local craft beers too and not not just going to the big beers. This beer flavored beer I feel like a broken record saying that but that's kind of what it is. It's funny because I hear that all the time too it's just uh uh, among brewers and among home brewers, like you, you just kind of get jaded from all of the uh, fancy, heavy East Coast IPA stuff and just go back to beer flavored beer. Nothing wrong with that. That is absolutely fine. It's totally normal. Yeah. It just, uh, it keeps you grounded. It keeps you like in a place where, you know, once again, what beer is supposed to taste like. I think if I was 80 years old, still drinking hazy IPAs, that would that would be weird. Hey, buddy, <laughs> bring me the one with all the lactose in it. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not how it's going to be. <laughs> be drinking beers like Pilsner. Yeah, exactly. Then I don't got to take extra pills. <laughs> yeah, that's convenient. Um, so we talked a little bit about you guys and the shutdown. I don't like to, to really lean into the shutdown too much. Everybody knows enough about that. Um, we're all watching the news and we're all hearing it every day. So that's cool. I mean, I, I'm, I'm praying for everybody, all the local breweries that they, they sell. And this is the second time through. So it, you know, get out there and support the breweries, buy some beer to go um, and say hi, cause we miss you. <laughs> I know I miss talking to people. Um, it's gonna be a hard old few months for a lot of breweries that are already struggling at this point. 
well you already did it once and now you know what to look forward to and it's hard and you it's just hard man it's all very hard so you you, you dread it and there's a lot of people saying they're going to open anyway and hey man however you got to deal with this i just hope that everybody does what's safe, safest for them and their families and for other people's families um we got to look out for each other so yeah cheers to all of you who are doing the best you can in a hard time god bless so short trend small transition um we got together yesterday and swapped beers and we um we were talking about one thing that we really love uh about uh your uh your day job over at perfect brewing supply um it's also where I, I stop at constantly for coffee so i popped in to uh perfect brew to chat with these guys trade some beers and picked up some tala this is the tala espresso roast um this is actually the one that i put in uh your what hurts which was our first out that we put out it was uh it was about uh, 12 pounds of this stuff and it was absolutely wonderful totally coffee didn't get any vegetable flavors or anything like that and it's uh guatemala honduras and costa rica guatemala some of the best coffee beans you can get your hands on if you see guatemala on a bag anywhere grab it but definitely this one uh mm -hmm. chocolatey creamy some almond flavor um and perfect brewing supply also has uh royal crown coffee old crown Sorry, Old Crown. Old Crown Coffee, and now uh, what's the new one? It's Conscious a, Cup. Conscious Cup, yeah. Yep. Well, they're yep. all, all pretty fairly close local roasters. I know Tala roasts right in Libertyville. Conscious Cup is roasting in Crystal Lake. Crystal, Crystal Lake, yeah. And Old Crown is uh, is out of state, but not too far away. Fort Wayne, Indiana, that's where Andy's uh, the shop owner at Perfect Brewing is from so he's he knows the guys over there ben is their owner and he sees over a lot of their roasting and stuff and i think their coffee is some of the best i've ever had in oh, my life those guys kill it i absolutely mm -hmm. love it i think like 25 years or more they've been roasting coffee so they've been doing it before it was a cool thing to do i guess right yeah that's always the cool thing to be able to say is like you were doing it before it was cool. Um, they've got one very special roast that they do that we won't mention because Ryan and I like to hoard that, that recipe. But uh, yeah, I know you're talking about. <laughs> yes, I know you're talking about. <laughs> we don't, they don't tell you guys about all the coffee they get in. They call me first. Oh no. I've become such a coffee, uh, coffee whore, me and Dan Berger, man. You guys are good coffee customers, for sure. But uh, yeah, the, the Conscious Cup and the Tala, those guys have been really good customers of ours. And it, it was not a tough decision to decide to sell their coffee at our shop, not only because they're good customers, but because the coffee they make is great. Well, what's some of the, so that's a good thing. I mean, we're talking about Perfect Brew, like what's some other stuff you guys do over there? Maybe tell everybody. Uh, if they haven't been into your store before, let them, let them know like uh, all the different stuff you guys do because it's not just a beer shop. Yeah, I mean, it's a homebrew shop, but we're basically like a grocery store slash hardware store for home brewers that are brewing beer at home. But we're starting to see a lot of people that are realizing they're going to be stuck inside for a while and they need something to do while they're stuck inside so they're going to pick up a hobby so home brewing or making wine or cider or kombucha we do kombucha as well so yeah. we sell all the kits you need all the hardware to get started on doing that and we're going to start doing like zoom consultations because we're we're not offering classes at the time being because we're in a pandemic and we don't want to have too much exposure so we're offering online classes so we have starter kits that we're going to be offering at a discount at the beginning of november tomorrow and then um it comes with like a free consultation so we'll walk you through the process because it can be a little daunting to a lot of people to pick up a new hobby and 
have all this foreign looking equipment to make beer at home. So we walk them through like what all these weird pieces of plastic are actually made to do. The framing yeah. thing, and I, I can remember because I don't feel like it was that, that long ago because it wasn't uh, when I made my first batch. And like your biggest thing that you're worried about is that like, is it, you're trying to make it be perfect. So you're reading everything four or five times, but um, guess what? It's not going to be perfect, <laughs> but yeah, that... it'll, it'll still be beer. So just follow the instructions and let it ferment out and, and have fun. It's, it's, it's brewing. Have a brew. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, there's also do cheese and winemaking. Cheese and yeah, wine's huge for us, especially this past couple months, which have passed because the wine season is, is passed. All the grapes came and went. But we do that in the fall where we get grapes and let people make wine from scratch, which I don't think a lot of people even realize is a possibility before so they come cool. talk to us. We got um, five uh, five gallon drums from you guys um, of what was it, Cabernet Sauvignon, and uh, no, what was it? Uh, Sauvignon Blanc. Sauvignon Blanc. Yeah, sorry. White wine. Yeah. Uh, for the Sauvignon Blanc back in the spring, and put it into um, our uh, Caduceus beer. So uh, that was a, a ton of fun in it. Man, did it ever go great with those Nelson Sauvin hops. It was just just absolute. It was like Nelson Sauvin and like you pumped it full of steroids. Yeah, which is my favorite yeah. hop in the world. It's got to be it's one of my, It's not my favorite, but it's definitely one of my favorites. And, it's definitely my uh, favorite. That, I decided. That aroma is just, was just amazing on that beer. And I still actually have some of that beer. So it's still drinking excellent, by the way. It was a tribute to good yeah. canning practices. So, don't see yeah. <laughs> Not on, especially on a hoppy. We know, we know a little bit about that because we use the same canning line. <laughs> mm -hmm. Those Willcraft guys are pretty good. Willcraft gets it done, man. They crush it. Um, right. Let's see where we're at, man. What we got going on here? About 32 minutes. Um, I was going to talk a little bit about GABF because I forgot to talk about it on the last uh, last session that I had with Jack Cantle. Um, and I'll, I'll just speak mostly about uh, Light the Lamp Brewing here in Grays Lake. They took home a bronze medal for their uh, Amer American Belgian Belgio style uh, uh, beer called Still Single. So That's the second medal in, in two years for Light the Lamps. So back to backers. Back to back. Killing it in Gray's Lake. Go Danny Ray. You're the man. And uh, just, a, just a little heads up. Dan's my cousin. So um, I can talk about him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's that's it. I think it's especially cool when they win for obscure, like low ABV beers for some reason that I uh, have more respect for that. It just means you're absolutely the man. And because brewing smaller, low ABV beers without a lot of hops to hide behind is the hardest thing to do in brewing. It's, uh, yeah. Last year it was light it, yep. cream ale, cream ale, which we were there for in Denver celebrating with them. That was awesome. With Dan, which was just really cool. At Crooked Stave. Oh, yeah. That was a lot of fun. That yeah, was great. And then this year for Still Single, which is another small little Belgian single, you know, that's fantastic. Yeah, which they're brewing again. Their assistant brewer came in and bought some hops from us because they were unexpectedly brewing it again. I don't know if I'm breaking the news or I'm not supposed to say that, but I think it's in a tank again. Yeah, they've got it going. Fresh batch. Of course they're brewing it again. They just won, uh, they just won a bronze medal for it, so. Got to make sure you keep that one on now. All right, I so I just wanted to bring that up. Um, we'll uh, we'll probably go ahead and do like an after session. So I'll post uh, the Zoom address uh, for anybody who wants to jump on and, and chat with uh, me and Ryan for a little while, and we'll get off um, we'll get off the live stream. Uh, next up on uh, Solidarity Sessions, I got Kyle Wenzel from Harbor Brewing. Harbor Brewing is in Winthrop Harbor, Illinois, and had an awesome summer down on the lakefront at their new uh, 
beer garden. Uh, Kyle and I are going to be drinking my Hack Max Headroom, which is our uh, stout that we submitted to GABF this year, got to the second round, but did not place. So, uh, but we're digging that beer. It's, uh, it's doing uh, excellent things. It's still out there on the shelf, so you can go buy it at Gold Eagle and some other local places. Um, so, yeah, this one next week, me and Kyle once so, hey, look at you. <laughs> awesome. So you, can, you can jump in with us, too, on that one. Cool. I I will, uh, I'm going to just try and figure out where I go to grab the, the link for this big boy here. No, not there. Where is the zoom? Yeah. All right, cool. Well, I'm going to jump us off on Facebook. So everybody, thank you for logging in and checking us out. Um, you got anything else to say about anything else you got going on there, Ryan? Come to Perfect Brew Supply. We'll uh, give you a new hobby that you're going to become obsessed with and we'll help you figure it all out. Yeah, I can vouch for that. That's totally going to happen. <laughs> Learn how to make beer while you're sitting at home trapped in the middle of winter in Chicagoland. You should... You should definitely do that. Cool. All right. Go check them out and go buy some beer from your local breweries too, including Roaring Table. Thank you.